Welcome to this companion video for the click membrane. This video is going to help you understand how this instrument works, specifically how to calibrate and play it, and uh, some of the options that we can choose between on the instrument. We'll also get into some possible failure modes, so stuff that might go wrong with the instrument, what problems that might cause, and what we can do to fix or avoid those problems. This is not a tutorial on how to make one of these. That's in a separate video and I'll put a link to that down in the description. So whether you made the membrane using the Continuum Lab instrument kit, or maybe you sourced the components yourself and downloaded the code from GitHub, or maybe someone else made it and now it found its way into your hands and you're wondering what to do with it. Well, this is the video for you. Let's get into it. <laughs> First, we'll calibrate. The membrane is pretty simple in this regard because it only has one type of sensor, which is analog. The calibration routine on the membrane is the same as on all the click instruments. First, we press the calibration button, of course. The light on the microcontroller will turn on for a second and then off again. Next, we keep the button pressed while activating all the sensors. And then when we're done, we can release the button again. The way you activate the sensors when calibrating is hugely important. If you press the membrane down to the bottom of its range at calibration, then that will also make it less sensitive when you play. On the other hand, if you calibrate with a light touch, then you can achieve high sensitivity, but possibly at the cost of not having a lot of resolution. What I mean by that is that you might get a full velocity output even if you only touch the membrane lightly. I personally prefer a sort of medium level calibration, giving a good balance between sensitivity and resolution. Once you have a calibration you're happy with, you can save the data by pressing the calibration button three times in quick succession. The LED will blink three times to show that your calibration has been saved successfully. So now we're calibrated and we're ready to play. The basic use case for the membrane is as a percussion instrument. So you hit an individual drum and then you get a velocity based output based on how hard you hit it. These are the notes that the membrane instrument outputs. They correspond to a pentatonic scale. You might need to adjust your synth so that you get the drums you want on each output. The reason why I chose these notes instead of a standard MIDI drum output is so that the output makes sense if you use the membrane for something other than drums. To show you how that works, we need to get into the different options on the instrument, specifically the option to output continuous volume control instead of velocity. This is activated by inserting a jumper into instrument pin zero. The default output for continuous control is CC number 2, but just like on the other click instruments which use continuous control, it can be changed to CC number 7 by inserting a jumper into the analog pin 9 header between the signal and ground pins. Then of course you can also select how many drums you want to make, which is done with option pin 0 and 1. You can choose between 1, 4, 6 or 8 sensors. Finally, let's talk about some possible problems that might occur with this instrument. Now, because there's only one type of sensor on here, this part is pretty simple. The CNY70 sensor module in each drum is measuring the distance to the balloon membrane. So if that setup is unstable, then you're sure to have problems. This might take the form of a constant or intermittent low level output from the sensor. Another important aspect here is the actual distance between sensor and membrane. The color and reflectivity of the balloon has a lot of influence in this, of course, so your mileage may vary. But the way these sensor modules are set up, and with a metallic balloon like this one, the distance should be somewhere between 7 mm and 1 cm or so. Otherwise, you'll find it really hard to calibrate usefully. Finally, you need to make sure that the 3-pin connector for each sensor is plugged into the breakout board correctly. Make sure that ground goes to ground and that the cables aren't tangled and you should be fine. If you get this wrong, you'll either get a lot of noise from the sensor or no output at all. And 
And that's it for this companion video. I hope you found it useful and that it helped you understand the potential and possibilities of the membrane. If you're interested in buying one of the kits for yourself or for a geeky friend or family member, then you can do that over at continuumlab.com, where I sell both the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself as well as various types of click instruments. The uh, complete kit comes with all of the components and sensor materials necessary to make this instrument as well as many more. And all of those instruments come pre-programmed onto the microcontroller in the kit, so even complete beginners can get started making cool MIDI controllers with zero coding and simple techniques. And of course, you can check out the build video for the membrane as well as the rest of the click instruments from the links in the description. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the continuum.